imagine traveling to Africa and then visiting specific countries in Africa which you haven't named because Africa is not a country, it's a continent and then use the kids there as a trope because you want to push your white silver complex about how you went there and saved them. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, that's you, Emily. I just don't understand how did you edit this video and decided to post it thinking we would just ignore it. These African children don't need to be saved because you only made this video to use these kids for views. Very typical. Don't you think we're going too far? Oh, I'm just a kid. Don't be a loser. Don't be a loser. I never use my brain. Okay. I only use my heart. I'm a Jew. Of course I'm Zionist. Israel is my ancestral indigenous homeland. I'm also Muslim and a Zionist because Allah granted the land of Israel to <laughs> These are some books by Palestinian authors for the fantasy, sci-fi, speculative fiction lovers, or anybody who wants to try that genre and also read books by Palestinian authors. The first book is Thunderbird. This follows a young Palestinian orphan girl named Noor and basically she has to go back in time to collect the Thunderbird's feathers in order to save the world and she gets help from this gin cat and from people who look like her in the past and it was super cool and super fun. The next book is Squire. This is a young adult graphic novel. It's, the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous and it was such an important read. Um, it follows this young girl and basically she enlists to go become a knight for the Empire and she looks up to the Empire and she wants to do this one because she wants to be a knight and two because she gets a citizenship and her people have been oppressed and this is such a big deal for her because then she'll actually be a citizen um, and then she starts to realize that um, the government has been oppressing people and they're lying about why they're at war and basically they want to expand the regime and it was so good and one of the best graphic novels ever. Next two I haven't read but I'm really looking forward to them. The first one is Forecast. This follows this main character Calvin and basically he wants to escape his alcoholic father and he goes to the summer house and when his alcoholic father makes an appearance he goes through this door in order to get the power of foresight but this may cause more harm than good because he sees things that he shouldn't have and he must dive into his past and this sounds so good. The last book is The Sentient. This follows this neuroscientist and basically she's put on this controversial cloning project and she doesn't agree with it. She doesn't really want to do it. So she, she starts trying to uncover the mystery of how to stop this and she discovers so many hidden things and this sounds really, really good and it's a blend of fantasy and sci-fi and it looks phenomenal. Do you ever just want to slap someone's body so hard? I found the way that a lot of the left is talking about what's happening in the Middle East to be confusing. What's the reason you won't find a condemnation of a certain militant group on this page? The mainstream liberal narrative is something like this. The Palestinian people are not Hamas. The last election was in 2006. And most people in Gaza right now are children. There's no way they could have voted for them. That's true. It's important to distinguish people from organizations. But the fact you have to contend with is that a non-zero portion of Palestinians did vote for Hamas. And once you have that information, you have two options. 
and choose dehumanization or context. Dehumanization route is this. They're monsters, they're animals. How could they vote for this group? Can they not see the same criticisms that I see? Context route is the Palestinian people have the same level of humanity as I do. They're acting rationally based on political context the same way that I would. They're dealing with an oppressive government that lies to them. A government that steals their land and kills their children regardless of how nonviolent they are. And in that context, they made a political decision about who could best protect them. Here's my argument. If you have the right to water, you don't have the right to weigh in on that decision. I personally have the right not only to a hot shower, but to clean, drinkable water at all times. No government can systematically cut off my water supply. That is not the case in Gaza. 40% of children in Gaza have had a bacterial infection because of the water that they're forced to drink. The people of Gaza do not have their right to water protected. If you're living in fear, despair, and horror, your political decisions are going to be different. And there's this very annoying argument going on. Oh, the left is supporting a terrorist organization. College students don't understand what Hamas really is. No, I understand your criticism of that group. I'm not saying it's incorrect. I'm just not impressed by it. If a decent portion of people is supporting a group that's that bad, I'm wondering how bad the circumstances were that pushed human beings to do that. That's where our focus should be. Your edgy criticisms are not moral high ground. You're just fueling the dehumanization narrative. That's all. Free trip to Israel. What is birthright? Well, let me tell you about my first time visiting Israel. I was in my early 20s. I'd never been to Israel. And I found out that as a Jew, I had the opportunity to get a fully expense paid trip to Israel. I had the time of my life. And on that birthright trip, we did everything sleeping in Bedouin tents in the south, floating in the Dead Sea, partying in the Shuk in Jerusalem, hiking the ancient site of Masada, and of course, hanging out a little bit in what has become one of my favorite cities in the world. What the actual. Like, what the actual. They don't want to ban TikTok. It's just that their PR is not working. The fact that they have literal D-list celebrities doing their PR for them. The average American is probably like really, really fucking confused of like, why is James from Big Time Rush doing a Birthright Israel ad? Also, aren't they at war? Yeah, a country that's under attack and needs our military funding and assistance doesn't have money to fund free trips, all expense paid trips. This is not new. This has been going on for decades. Palestinians cannot even afford fucking food. But Israel can fund Super Bowl ads and targeted PR on TikTok. This is why Americans are stereotyped as being the dumbest fucking citizens in the world. Like, oh my god, what is not computing in your brain? The evangelicals who believe that all of this is happening so that Jesus salam, can come back and who are okay with what's happening to Palestinians for that reason... Do you guys think you're actually going to be able to look Jesus alayhi salam in the eyes, in the eyes, and say that you are his true believer and follower, even though he was a Palestinian man himself? There is absolutely nothing that affirms me more in my faith than the hypocrisy of Zionists. really great rule to live by that will never lead you astray is that if you're in a group of people who are protesting the Israeli government and they have Israeli flags that are not on fire, they are still your opposition. This has been a dynamic that we have seen happening across so-called Israel for months, a, a dynamic that actually predates October 7th of Israelis getting out to the streets and protesting the Netanyahu-led Likud government. But the thing is that, you know, even though these protests are oftentimes still framed as progressive, as these people who are taking to the streets to protest a corrupt and increasingly far-right government, um, they're still supporting a lot of really horrific things. The vast majority of these liberal Zionist protesters are people who are perfectly okay with apartheid, with Zionist settler colonialism, with the continued occupation of Palestine, if not in the 1967 territories, most certainly in the 1948 territories. These are oftentimes groups of people who do not actually disagree with the existence of the Zionist settler colonial project. They just have a preference over what the management regime of that project looks like. That distinction is really critical because what those protesters are protesting is not, again, settler colonialism, genocide, and ethnic cleansing. What they're protesting is an increasingly far-right government that is starting to threaten some of their own positions at the top of a settler colonial hierarchy. Those are a group of people who still want to maintain a colonial hierarchy in which they are at the top. They simply want the government that's in charge of that hierarchy to be one that is palatable to them. 
And at the end of the day, sure, there is a distinction to be made between a liberal Zionist settler and so-called Tel Aviv, what is actually Yaffa, and some frontier settler in the West Bank. But those differences are a little moot when you consider that the Palestinians, either one of them means continued ethnic cleansing, continued genocide, continued slaughter of entire families, continued subjugation, and continued colonialism. Essentially, if these people really wanted equality, really wanted liberation, and really wanted something better than the current Israeli government, it would be Palestinian flags being flown in that crowd. Something we're thinking about, I think. Uh, but yeah, as always, free Palestine. Salam alaikum. Have a great day. Let's make a caramel cloud frappuccino featuring Starbucks. Multiple investigations have found that Starbucks sources its coffee from farms that rely on child and slave labor, including farms officially certified by Starbucks under their coffee and farmer equity qualification. In 2022, Starbucks was hit with a lawsuit claiming over 200 worker violations in just one US state, including firing unionized workers, spying on staff and refusing time off. In 2021, the company paid just 5.4 million in UK corporation tax. Despite its gross profit of 95 million and the fact that its former CEO is worth around $4 billion. In 2023, the US Labour Board received over 600 complaints about Starbucks treatment of workers, including union busting. After Starbucks Workers Union posted its support for Palestine, the company sued them. In response, people have been boycotting Starbucks, which happens to have recently made a loss of $11 billion. Here's the card for context. The card comes from a pack they have called the Jew pack. I'm not going to sit here telling you guys to cancel cards against humanity, yada yada yada, that's so offensive. Personally, I don't give a shit because making fun of Palestinians this way is nothing new. But there's no way you could approach me and tell me that that card doesn't have a deeper meaning than what is said on the surface. In the Jew pack, more than likely written by Zionist Jews because, you know, they joked about Palestine the way they did, it talks about destroying Palestinian villages. And they laugh at it. Instead of taking it seriously and speaking out against it because that's what's morally right, they laugh at it because it benefits them. We're not mad that somebody cracked an offensive joke. We're mad at the people who cracked the joke and the people who are laughing at it because their morals are fucked up. What the fuck? No! Let's make pressure cooker beef pho and talk about violent resistance. As someone who lives in Texas and owns guns, I absolutely believe in violent resistance. If someone were to break into my home with the potential of harming my family, my kids, I would violently resist. And that is not just my human right, but my right by law. So why is it that when Europeans move to the Middle East, over a million people out of their homes, steal their land, create a situation in which the indigenous people of the land have no choice but to resort to violent resistance, Easterners label them as terrorists. When we ourselves would do the exact same thing, and we are allowed to do the exact same thing according to our law. And for anyone who tries to say that Palestinians are not indigenous to the land. Don't forget, the first Israeli Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, said, If I were an Arab leader, I would never sign an agreement with Israel. It is normal. We have taken their country. Another time, he said, Let us not ignore the truth amongst ourselves. Politically, we are the aggressors and they defend themselves. The country is theirs because they inhabit it. Whereas we want to come here and settle down. But it sounds like he's acknowledging that the land is actually Palestinians. We really need to talk about anti-Semitism. And no, I'm not referring to the anti-Semitism you're accused of when you say that Israel should stop bombing innocent men, women, and children. I'm talking about the actual anti-Semitism that we've been seeing on the rise, the harmful one, the hateful one. Tensions have never been higher since October the 7th, and in the same way that Israel conflates anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, I'm seeing a lot of pro-Palestinians do the very same thing. There are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing, mainly from right-wing anti-Semites masking as pro-Palestinians. And this is something that we should be on the lookout for, because anti-Semitism does not in any shape, way, or form represent the pro-Palestinian movement. There are many beautiful Jewish people from around the world, and even Israelis, who are against the Israeli government and what they are doing to the Palestinian people. So it's very important not to conflate Jewish people with Zionism. I've been seeing way too many people, way too many people, either undermine the Holocaust, deny it flat out, or even saying that the Jewish people deserved it. 
Let's make things clear right here and right now. The Holocaust is a historical fact, and around 6 million Jewish people died during the Holocaust. Not 4 million, not 3 million, not 100,000, but 6 million Jewish people. This is one of the most well-documented periods in all of history, and no one else documented it better than the Germans themselves. Undermining or denying the Holocaust is... I don't think disrespectful is even the word. It's abhorrent, it's disgusting, and I condemn every single person who does it. Second of all, I've been seeing way too many people, mainly Arabs, saying stuff like, Oh, I can't be anti-Semitic, I am a Semite myself. That's not what the word means, and you know that's not what it means. While Arabic people are technically Semites, anti-Semitism means anti-Jewish, so of course you can be anti-Semitic. Third of all, Jewish people don't run the world. Israel doesn't control the world and the United States. Because guess what? There are a lot of non-Jewish, powerful and rich individuals. And a lot of them also fund organizations such as APAC. You are just specifically choosing to focus on rich and powerful Jewish people in order to prove your anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. We need to learn better. We need to do better. We cannot fall into this trap of anti-Semitism and completely tarnish the name and dignity of this movement. We need to be on the lookout and also call out these wolves in sheep's clothing, these anti-Semitic right-wingers who are pretending to be pro-Palestinian, not because they care about the Palestinian people, but because they hate Jewish people. And I am not seeing enough people call out this problem because it is everywhere. It's on TikTok, it's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook. This needs to be talked about. We cannot let anti-Semitic be on the rise the same way we cannot allow for Islamophobia to be on the rise. Do you know that is actually harmful to overuse the term people of color? Hi everyone, I'm Abby Olagoro and this is DSR in a minute or less. So, a lot of the time you will see the usage of the term people of color when referencing anybody who is not white. But not only can this be harmful by reinforcing whiteness, and I've talked about this so many times, but it can also be harmful because a lot of times nowadays people of color is used to avoid saying the names of certain groups of different ethnic and racial groups. For example, it's Black History Month, or it's ending Black History Month, the end. And a lot of things that were said this month referenced people of color when they were really meant to just reference black people and often that's not only because we have been conditioned to be afraid of the word black but there is a large problem when it comes to the co-opting of blackness and black movements and it's utilized to reinforce the idea that black people are dealing with the exact same kind of circumstances as everybody else without actually recognizing the fact that every group of color has different types of issues that they face including infantilization versus adultification and just briefly we'll run through this is the idea that black kids and black people are seen as much older, whereas specifically for Asian people, they are viewed as much younger. And these two different sides of this have very different implications, both of which are harmful. So that's all for now, and we'll talk more later. I'm Abiola Ogoro. Say bye!